And what really, what really horrifies me is that uh, I'd forgotten this, but at the time, the, the New York Times reported that we had bombed a civilian hospital, and the reason uh, that America bombed the hospital in Fallujah was because it was the source of what the Times called rumors that there were large numbers of civilian casualties. Well, there were large numbers of civilian casualties. And, and these are not isolated time. incidents, Peter. We have to point out that these are happening more and more and more, and our military is shielding them from view. If we didn't have WikiLeaks, this wouldn't even be out there. It's the Alex Jones Show. I'm Jason Burma sitting in. We'll be back after this with Peter Dale Scott. For the first time ever, the secret agenda of the planet's ruthless superclass is exposed in stark detail. You know, th there is such a thing as insidious influence. Does it involve some sort of psychological domination? No world order that elevates one nation or group of people over another will succeed. It's a phrase that I often use myself, that we needed a new world order. So it's going to be an inner ruling elite and then everyone else. And I got news for you. You're everyone else. The whole concept of new world order, it really says that the state is God. They created in all of the British dependencies um, what they call round table groups. At a higher level of COG government where the constitutional authorities are not allowed to go. The new world order really is a tool for addressing a new world of possibilities. The people running this country are determined to destroy it. in the American Empire, deep poli politics and uh, JFK, and of course the war conspiracy are just some of the books that Peter Dale Scott has authored. It's the Alex Jones Show. I am Jason Burmis sitting in, talking with Peter. And Peter, these aren't isolated incidents. These are just the ones that are caught on film and sometimes, sometimes leaked to the public. And without an organization like WikiLeaks that has been targeted by intelligence, we wouldn't know about these things. And one of the things that you said in the interview that I'm probably going to be paraphrasing right now that I did include in my film is with the continuity of government program with non-constitutional authorities in control, we somehow have to mobilize a mass movement and we have to use the technology at our fingertips, a.k.a. the Internet. And that's what WikiLeaks and others have done. Can you speak to that? Yes, well, I think it's true. I mean, the big difference between this, these uh, two wars we have now, Iraq and Afghanistan, and the Vietnam War back in the 60s and 70s, was that uh, the press was, compared to today, relatively independent. It wasn't totally independent, but there were journalists who came back and started, were reporting the truth about Vietnam, even in the New York Times. And the Pentagon has taken major steps to make sure that never happened again. So now all the journalists are embedded. And thank goodness we have the Internet, which is performing today the role which uh, the uh, journalists like David Halberstam and Malcolm Brown uh, performed back in the 60s. So yes, I, I think it, as, as citizens, it's our duty if we are loyal to the country. I say this as a Canadian, but I, I feel loyal to America, the country. Uh, it's a duty to uh, inform ourselves about the realities in Iraq and Afghanistan. WikiLeaks, I just tested. If you just type Google for WikiLeaks, you get right away the video that uh, Jason was talking about a minute ago. Or if you type in William Blum and Fallujah, F-A-L-L-U-J-A-H, you will get this story that uh, Bill Blum has just done about how now there are uh, an appalling number of birth defects in Fallujah because of the uh, really illegal uh, munitions like depleted uranium that were, were used there. So is a, what we need are citizens informing themselves by going to the Internet. And uh, I'm hopeful, in my book, The uh, Road to 9-11, my it, I, I, it's filled with depressing facts, but I'm not really a pessimist. I'm an optimist about this country because there are decent people in it. But I think that uh, we have to appeal to the decency of Americans of all stripes to say 
although Americans disagree with each other all the time, that's the flavor of life in this country, that there should be also some things which we agree upon and bring us together. We don't want a country that tortures. We, we don't want a government that inga- invades foreign countries gratuitously, well, not exactly gratuitously, but for hidden motives like oil and, uh, and uh, with the false uh, claims that there are weapons of mass destruction there. When and let me, well, let me just stop you just for a second, Peter, because oil, you know, they used to say, oh, we're not there for the oil. I literally, on CNN yesterday, saw a commercial pushing the new green economy where they said, well, if we don't do it and we know it's going to be hard, it's a lot harder on our troops overseas. And then they show a tank blowing up. So now they're just out in the open saying, yeah, we're in Afghanistan and Iraq for their oil. If we don't go to a green economy, we're going to be in these wars forever. They have nothing to do with terrorism or weapons of mass destruction. That's the message I got. Yeah, well, I, I think the best proof that we went in for the oil is, as I say in my book, The Road to 9-11, uh, before 9-11, in the very first months of the George W. Bush first administration, uh, Cheney was set up in charge of a task force on energy. And uh, the, the, they've been very, even though it was a public body, it, it, they've not uh, released any they released almost no documents from that task force, but they did release two after a bitter court fight. And these were two maps of Iraq, which were all sliced up, showing where the oil was. Well, this is January. I mean, uh, we weren't at war. We had no reason to be at war with Iraq then, but they were planning then how to divide up the oil. And the first administrator who was sent there... Uh, 2003 was he had a sort of uh, free enterprise notion that the American country, companies could come in right away and take over the oil fields, which produced a lot of reaction in Iraq, obviously. Peter Dale Scott actually highlights massive amounts of this very damning evidence in his many books. We're going to come back after the break and take your call specifically for Peter. And I also want to get into the money laundering aspect of this drug running out of Afghanistan. Before I go back to Peter Dale Scott, I want to read just a little subsection out of his latest article, which is entitled... Can the U.S. triumph in drug-addicted war in Afghanistan, opium, the CIA, and the Karzai administration? Other institutions with a direct stake in the international drug traffic include major banks, which make loans to countries like Colombia and Mexico, knowing full well that drugs flow with... Uh, uh, drug flows will help underwrite the loans repayment. A number of the biggest banks, including Citibank, Bank of New York, and the Bank of Boston have been identified as money laundering conduits, yet never have faced penalties serious enough to change their behavior. In short, United States involvement in the international drug traffic links the CIA major financial interests and criminal interests in this country and abroad. Can you elaborate on that for us, Peter? Yes, well, um, I think you said before the break that we might talk about the Bank of Credit and Commerce International, BCCI. Absolutely. Uh, at the very beginning of uh, the first American involvement in Afghanistan, well, I mean the first uh, in, uh, military involvement, was in 1980. All the American equipment, and it was considerable, that was shipped there was shipped uh, through a bank account of, BCCI and the ships of something called Gokal uh, Shipping, which was uh, the same people, essentially. And they were people involved in the drug traffic, and the BCCI was eventually closed down in, in 1990 because of drug trafficking or drug money laundering. But it was a bank that the CIA was, uh, I shouldn't say the CIA, the head of the CIA, William Casey, met regularly in uh, Washington and also in Asia with the head of BCCI. I think it was no accident that we chose a drug money laundering bank because once you, you, you know, there's, there's huge amounts of money involved in, uh, in 
drug trafficking and in money laundering. And let me say this. In my next, in my film, I actually show a news clip of, uh, I believe it's either NBC or CBS with them admitting that William Casey had come clean and said that the U.S. did use BCCI to fund some of its covert operations. I mean, this is out in the open, mainstream media and CN interna CNN International reported that Bin Laden was also funded through BCCI back in the day. Yes, and my ne I have another book coming out next fall, which uh, I'm not quite sure about the title. It'll either be The Road to Afghanistan or The War Machine. You can keep up with it just by Googling for me, Peter Dale Scott, and what you'll see right away is my website, mm -hmm. and the information will be there. But I'm going to be pointing out, I have a whole chapter in that book about how there have been another, a, a number of banks that serve the purposes both of the CIA and also of organized